we're live. Nobody says anyone won't be able to hear anyone. Hey, we're live. Woo. All right. Um, I'd like to watch. Sam, as far as the comments, you're able to see those? Yes. Uh, well, I'm able to see the, the Q&A if someone submits them. Um, but I'm not actually uh, following the comments because that'll be so a different. So I'm thing. guessing the Q&A is right below the video. I think something? you have to click on it, submit it, but that's fine. It's, if somebody can figure it out, then we'll totally respond to that. Because there's something that says say something, but the Q&A button is on the video. Yeah, I, I think you'd have to push it on the video. I'll keep the, the event page up if someone actually posts a normal comment. I don't know why there's a duplicate functionality like that. That's fine. So no, it's on the uh, I, Google Plus page. Name. Yeah, I think this is just the inner group chat. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, oh, yeah. Close the close the chat thing. Well, somebody might want to use it. No, no, that's only for us. Oh. oh. Well, what if I want to use it to write <laughs> terrible messages? Okay. So. Silent backwards comments. What are you doing? I never just typing. No, no, you're not. No. Uh, so we've got two viewers. Is there a Q&A session that I should have up? or? No, no, that's fine. You're good. You just need to watch the... So it looks like we've got two people view watching us. Uh, <laughs> I'm going well, to post and let people know that we are actually 100% live now. All right. All right, time to, time to act better. Can you do the live thing on Facebook, too? Or is that separate than YouTube? It's that's actually like separate. Facebook's own thing. It's separate. <laughs> the reason I didn't, I chose not to do the Facebook one is because we'd only be able to use one webcam. So we'd oh, have to be in the same physical location. Yeah. Which is uh, unfortunate. Blame Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, get yourself together. Even freaking Google Plus can do it, and, and you know. <laughs> So just letting people know that we're here and we're... Sam, look at the chat. Yep. I'm looking at the chat. Oh, no, that's fine. That's <laughs> <laughs> nah, fine. Okay. Only a flesh wound. All right, so... Flesh wound. All right, so this is the live stream. Oh, Jasmine is on the, uh, the viewer's side, and she says she can't see the chat, so it's all okay. Good. Um, I guess the chat is just for people in the recording. Yes. Uh, so this is the pre the live stream pre launch yeah. of our Kickstarter, Woo! which is pretty cool. I can't believe we're actually at this point. <laughs> I know it. I know it. It's, been a, it's a long time coming. So now uh, we're here. Yeah. So, um, so I guess um, you're the moderator, Sam. So uh, yeah, we're, gonna, well, we're gonna wait a smidge before launching to see if we get any more viewers. Um, you know, I'd love to get more people uh, eyes on it. You know, telling everyone we're gonna do this launch thing and then they miss it. Okay. Um, but I guess um, so. There's six stories in it. Um, yeah. So the authors are uh, good old Justin Tebow there, and Nate is on the other one, um, and uh, we the, some of the authors couldn't make it today, uh, but they are Brad and uh, Brad Gentis, um Let's see. Brett Parsons. Yep, Brett Parsons, uh, Jada Taylor, Greg A. Brown. I think that's the six. Justin, Nate, Greg, Jada, Brett, Brad. Yep. So the stories are wonderful, absolutely. Um, um, all the stories revolve around adventure, um, adventure in, in some that? form or another. Um, yep. Um, <laughs> Nate, count so, down over there. Um, so I guess uh, let's get Nate. Let's get Nate on the on the chat here. 
You look surprised, Nate. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so what? How are they? <laughs> what's been the journey? I mean, we know. I don't know. We'll let uh, tell other people. Uh, what's been your kind of journey as one of the authors on this book? You know, I guess was it three, uh, three the, years ago? The, the, the journey. Yeah. Um, it's just been a lot. Uh, I mean, at first you get the initial excitement um, and the initial idea, and everyone was like, yeah, and all, we're all on board for it. And then that runs out pretty fast when you actually have to do the work. <laughs> and then uh, and then as time went on, uh, it just kind of got harder. And then it was it was it was a thrill to actually finish. Um, when I first finished my piece, it was uh, oh, I was thrilled. I was so thrilled, and uh, it felt good to actually finish something. That's one of my biggest things is not finishing stuff. So that's one good thing about Antiford for me is that I actually finish projects. So woo. And uh, and then it was just a lot of waiting and you know trying to get things done in a timely manner and I think it's just kind of exciting I think uh, I mean we've been hearing about um, book publishing stuff since day one at least for us and uh, and yeah and it's just kind of great to finally see that come to fruition so I'm hoping that uh, that, the, that we get a lot of support from the community and that. We uh, we don't let the community down, so that we're able to, uh, you know, keep doing this. Yeah, very I don't cool. see why we won't be able to. Uh, oh, yeah. No, the stories have been awesome, and uh, so yeah, this started all with the we created the Badgers Challenge about three years ago. Um, Sounds about right. Yep. It's been long. Wow. I think they. I think you've been talking about it for four, maybe. Maybe not four years, that's a little thing, but definitely three and a half. It, it, it has been talked about for a while since the site kind of took off and more members were there and there was a lot of stories and, and yeah, it just kind of... Yeah, so, so we launched our, our Badgers Challenge to get people to make stories that would go into a book. We all did all of our crazy stories and, um, and uh, Nate, you actually... Um, you actually titled your story The Badger's Challenge, which is kind of nice yeah. to have a story in there with that title, hearkening back to the challenge that led to this book. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I thought it was a bit of a cop-out to do that at first, and then I ended up, as I started going with the idea that I wanted um, for, the, for, the, for the Badger's Challenge, um, I really wanted my first work to help with the world, and I didn't want to create something new. I kind of wanted to help accentuate what had already been created. So as, as people will read the Badger Challenge, it's, it's a traveling through Antifird story. So uh, we hit very, uh, very known places throughout Antifird uh, story. So, um, so as, things, as the story kind of started to form, uh, it was just kind of appropriate. And then I thought that that whole idea of getting all these people together of different backgrounds and, and, and skills and things and getting us all together to work on a single project. I thought it was very appropriate. So I ended up keeping it, and you guys didn't say no. So it's your fault well, that it's named that. <laughs> well, it, 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 definitely, you know, it definitely works. Uh, I don't, we did, when, when we, since we had issued the Badgers Challenge, I think when we first started it, we had thought, well, maybe we're going to be naming the book. We don't know what we're naming the book yet. So, But then we we're titling the book Adventure, a collection of short stories. So the fact that yours is the Badger's Challenge just works perfectly with it. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a bit meta, and I totally love that. Um, so I don't know... I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about your story, Justin, and then we can kind of maybe briefly talk about the other stories since the authors aren't here um, to give them justice. But um, talk about sure. the hunt. Um, my story kind of it's um, well, I draw a lot of my inspiration from more of the classic, more of the classical literature, um, 
rules run HG Wells, that that kind of stuff. Um, so when I went out to write write it, write the story, I wanted it from the perspective of somebody who did not know anything about the situation or about a situation, and they were kind of thrust into an adventure without knowing really what was what they were actually going to be in store for. All of the Hobbit. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, it, well, it's not just the Hobbit. The Hobbit actually followed that same kind of thing, but it's it's a somewhat common theme that you don't know what's going on, but you you grow as the story goes along, and that's uh, I guess kind of what I was kind of what I was uh, hoping for. So it follows a naturalist who is hired to travel from another country into Antiford to help with a, a hunting expedition. And it's, it's the story that revolves around that. Very cool. Yeah, I, so we had decided to start the book with yours, Justin, because it was a journey from outside of Antiford into Antiford, um, which kind of... Gets from the up. perspective from the perspective of somebody who's never been there, right? And so it gets our, our reader yeah. inclined. Sorry. Right. It, it's it's allowing the reader to become exposed to Antiford as the character is, mm-hmm. and as I've, much as you really can in a short story, uh, it's easier to do that that kind of thing in a novel or a series of novels. But and I believe that we chose uh, Nate's story, The Badger's Challenge, to. Uh, cap off and end the uh, the novel, which is fun because they're both a little bit uh, meta, a little bit kind of referring back to the process of making the book itself. And mm. so we start with the journey with the hunt, kind of introducing you, and then we kind of end with this big challenge that has this grand finale um, with with the um, Badger's mm-hmm. Challenge, which I thought was great. Um, and all the stories in between are really nice. Uh, let me if I'm not that. mistaken, those are also the two longest stories, kind of on the bookends? Uh, they come Am close. Right? A lot of the other stories are actually kind of similar in length. Uh, Brett's story, uh, Sarah Sinnott, was also uh, also quite long. I think as long as mine. Yours, Nate, happened to be uh, the longest story in the book. Mm. By far. Yep. So I guess I'll, I'll talk briefly to the other stories in here. Um, yes, it was, as we just mentioned, yeah, Sarah Sinnott and the Sinister Stalker by Brett Parsons. Um, yeah, he has his crew. Um, his crew is hired to protect uh, a young girl um, because there's been a stalker around the mansion that she lives in. Um, and it's really, it's a, it's a fun piece. You get the, Cal- the crew of the Calum novice together kind of solving a mystery and then going on some crazy chase adventure thing. Um, and I really like the interactions between all of the characters in that crew. Um, that's always kind of why I liked, I've liked uh, Brett's stories where, you know, he's got the whole crew and they kind of bounce off each other in fun, interesting ways. Um, especially his, uh, his doctor, uh, Dr. White. Um, yep, and then we've got Assassin's Greed. Um, I don't know if you uh, want to chime in and talk to any of these. Um, yeah, I can talk to Assassin's Greed. It's actually one of my favorites from the book. Um, that it's about an assassin named Liala who is found out um, on the ship that she's sort of traveling with. And uh, she's dumped in the desert, and uh, she's... It, it's really interesting because as uh, my character with Antiford, I deal with a lot with poisons and potions and stuff like that. And I really love the imagery in this in this piece that it's sort of um, it's sort of the human will to su- survive when facing like death from the toxins or death from the desert, like what happens when de- dehydration sets in. It's a really, really interesting piece. And it's uh, full of really interesting characters as well. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, okay, and then what's next? We have the Manticore, um, which uh, 
again. I, I we were hoping Brad would be able to join us tonight. Um, but the Manticore is just it's a one of it's a continuation of the stories about the um, the Baron Nestor Delgado and kind of the the black sleeves and that whole Argenstrath crew. Um, so they were out searching for the airship, the Manticore, um, the crew of the Arbiter. Uh, they went out and they were searching for this this kind of almost mythical proportions in how much like how famous it was in the war, um, and it just disappeared. And so they were searching for it. Um, and there's just some really creepy stuff going on, some stuff that you don't quite expect uh, in the Hogenmar mountain range. You know, you there's some some stuff that's kind of out of left field, and uh, it gets a little a little violent, a little bloody, uh, and it's just got this whole kind of creepy tone. Not uh, that any of these stories don't get violent and bloody. These are adventures, and these adventures lead to crazy circumstances. Absolutely. Um, so it's been a lot learned of a lesson, before. and everyone's better for it. <laughs> So it's been a while since I read The Manticore. I look forward to uh, reading it again. When the book gets all bound together, I'm totally going to go through and read all of these again. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. It's uh, different when you're reading something for editing purposes. Yeah, I, I actually didn't get to read any of these, so um, the, the authors were not informed of the other authors and their stories, so I'm actually a little <laughs> excited as well. Um, I think The Manticore is the only one I might have seen, and I think that was before it was decided it was going into the book. So I'm sure it's changed a lot since since I had read it. So, yep. Um. The man, yes, the Manticore is uh, uh, has been featured on the the website itself. It's received a bit of a touch up for for grammar and that sort of stuff, being publication uh, worthy. Um, and it, I believe it's the only story. No, no, no. Uh, Return Home was also is also on the website as well by Greg Brown. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> but in a much more uh, edited, ready for publication yeah. way. Right. Yep. Uh, do you want to talk to that story? Um. Or sure. Do <laughs> oh, <laughs> do I remember it? Yeah. No, it was a fun story. <laughs> it was. Yeah. It was. It was. Um. I guess it was. It was a fairly standard Alexander Nolan story, uh, full of. Gunpowder. Gunpowder, explosions, <laughs> grenades, blood, violence. That's that's his forte, and he does it well. Sure. Um, he finds that the... Uh, I guess he kind of finds that the country that he's in isn't for him, and he ends up leaving. <laughs> uh, but he has to go through a few things before he can actually get out. <laughs> yep. Yeah, including one poor pet shop. Uh. <laughs> and I guess I'll just kind of finish that up with, um, like, yeah, it's it's part of... Um, so Alexander Nolan's story takes him from Conwell and Antiford, and then he kind of travels to Coo to discover some backstory stuff, and then this story is kind of him deciding that this backstory land, Coo, is really just not for him. He wants to get back to Conwell, you know, his kind of pirate town... Uh, where he can just, you know, he is the law kind of thing. Uh, he's sick of being bound up in coup. And, yeah, it, you're right. It's totally balls to the walls, crazy, violent grenades. Um, and, of course, uh, Squigglebottom, the uh, the land octopus yeah. that they travel with, being awesome as usual. You uh, can't have a, uh, an Alexander Nolan story without Squigglebottom. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so uh, that that covers all the stories that are in this book, uh, which is which is wonderful. So, all right. So we've only got a few viewers still, but um, I don't know. I just this book has been a long time coming, and I'm just super excited for it. <laughs> Well, how about this? You guys are launching your uh, your your Kickstarter and stuff. So, how about you guys talk about the process? Because I know that there's been a long process in just getting ready to not only do a steampunk, uh, doing a a Kickstarter, but you you have to like get a lot of stuff together to to print a book that you you guys own. So why don't you talk about the entire process 
of, uh, of the last few years of getting this ready. Because I, I don't, don't think keep we have going. a few hours. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take, like, days. No, um, okay. So, it, really, it, it, it came down, you know, we, we started editing, started doing some of the, uh, like, cover art, the design yeah. for the book. Um, we done a lot of research in how to actually function a Kickstarter, and I've been handling some of the business aspects of trying to actually get through what what it would all mean, how we're breaking everything down, what we need for even shipping, which you know may not seem like a lot, but it gets expensive if we have yeah any kind of success with this. Yeah, um, and then what it means later on, how we're working with the, the printer, uh, because we've never worked with a book printer before. Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting... And, uh, that's feel, interesting. We feel like we've chosen a, a good one, but you don't really know, because I, I've worked with printers um, on an art basis before, and working with book printers, it's a completely new beast, um, especially when... You know, they're halfway across the country. We don't get to see any of their machinery. We don't get to work with them. Like, we'll, we'll get to work with them personally through email, but it's, it's very different not to be face-to-face -face with the printer. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's sort of a risk that we're taking, working with um, the particular printer that we chose, but um, they seem like a good fit. And They, do have, a, they do have somewhat of a reputation. They yeah. have a lot of books that they have printed, so... And um, it's also different pr printing a book ourselves versus so, so directly through a printer versus through a, a publishing service because we get to own all the rights to this stuff. Um, like we get we get to trickle down the profit to our authors. Um, so we don't have that cut taken out, which a lot of self-publishing does. Is that um, there's actually like background copyright issues that you have to deal with where um, most of the big self-publishing uh, companies, they, they actually take a large percentage. Um, and that's not something that we wanted to do. Right, we wanted, we wanted to, we, we still want to keep all of the rights in-house, yeah. in, in, in a sense, and with us and the authors. Especially with, when we're working with so many different authors, is that it's very important to, to like, keep, like, we don't want to sell their copyright, like, their names and whatever to other people. No. That's something that we don't want to do. We want to keep it all in-house. But like, another, another cool <laughs> thing that we're, that we're going to also be doing, though, is uh, we will be getting an ISBN number, so we'll be able to have copies printed for sale in, in small bookstores yeah. if, if we wanted to. So, which, honestly... Being able to see a book that we've put together, <laughs> and you know, my my name is on this book, and it's for sale in in a store, would be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so I guess from from my, you know, point of view perspective, like um, after all the authors kind of wrote all these stories, and it took us a while to kind of get some traction on getting our head around the editing process. Um, I actually did way a ton of research into grammar, way further in than I ever thought I would, um, because I just needed to make sure that I was doing it right, and I wanted to make sure that all the the authors kind of got the the justice of having a proper a properly edited um, process, a proper editing process go through their stories, because um, all the stories kind of have to follow the same you know grammar rules and this and that. Whatever they are, they have to be consistent. Um, and they all have to be, you know, kind of... Every story gets cleaned up a little bit. Um, cause Sorry we wanna, about that. Yep. Uh, we, no, that's fine. We just wanted to make sure that all of our authors kind of get um, showcased properly. Um, and, yeah, like with owning the rights to all the stories, the authors already are trusting us uh, as citizens of Antiford. You know, whenever they write a story for us that, like, you know, we kind of, you know, own some of this stuff, but... It's kind of like, well, we're it's all a partnership. We're all kind of partners in this big community. Um, and we just want to keep that going and, and, and do the right thing by our whole, our whole group. Um, so even the fact that we are a business, we did that entirely just 
because we were going to make a book yeah. um, so that it would be something where no one particular person would own it. There'd just be this separate entity that, you know, does the publishing thing and does the copyright and all that stuff to kind of, you know, protect everyone. And so everyone kind of, um, so there's no, nobody's usurping rights and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, just, yeah, just being able to publish and put the book out, we were like, all right, we have to be a business. We have to have this business entity that should, Yep. whole purpose is just support the community, you know. Um, so that's been nice. Um, and, and hopefully we continue to use that to um, to help all of our community members kind of sell things and, and make books and that sort of things. Um, we don't, I don't think we necessarily want to restrict, you know, these book publishing events to just things that we've sanctioned the we want you know if you are an antiford member and you want you know a story to be published we want that to be part of the process um that that, that can be all something if, we can work out so if you're if you're doing the work and you want to showcase that work that that's kind of why we why we created the group and why we set up as a business is to help make it simpler yeah, for our to, to simplify the process of, of all that for, for our members, um, or for the members of the group. So I think Nate's been uh, in and out a little bit here. Yeah. That's okay. I think he... At least we got him to talk about his, his story yeah. in the book. And hopefully he'll be able to... So I'm just... I'm really excited for the just the, the spread, which, which authors we got in... Um, you know, which stories... These are all really good stories, too, and they all kind of showcase something different about our world, um, which mm. is really nice. You know, we've got one in the desert. We've got one in the tundra. We've got one in airships. You know, we've got one in the city. We've got one that travels all over the place. Um, so we've got this really nice range, and hopefully people who aren't familiar with the Antiford um, world are will find this a decent introduction. Mm. Yeah, what I've heard from uh, a lot of these different stories in the synopsis, it sounds like we did a good job of covering not only the basics, but covering the world and all its different good, bad, the uh, the seedy underbelly to the to the good heroicness of kind of the world. And hopefully, um, this will be a good medium to bring people in and know that our, that oh, you like this, you like what. You see, we have a whole website full of this kind of material that you can uh, you can read and comment on and tell the authors they're doing good or they're doing bad. <laughs> yeah, or you can even join and write some things like it yourself um, if you're not already a part of, or you know, if you're not one of us. Uh, and I also really like the idea that we, while we have the website and you can kind of go as casual and as flash fiction as you want, and then you can, you can, we have people on the site who have written epics on the site, um, and you have that range and you can kind of casually write the stuff. I like the fact that we have this book as this kind of example that, yes, you can put a ton more work into it if you really want something, you know, a, a step above, um... And you can get it through a publishing process. Um, and I, I really like that idea that we go from the tiniest flash fiction casual, I wrote this adventure story, choose your own things when I was drunk, to I put years of work into this and had it edited and published. That's kind of a nice range of, you know, I'm a casual author to I kind of want to be, you know, a published author. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so should we do another question or well, topic? It's coming up on seven thirty. How much are you talking about the Kickstarter itself? Like, this is a <laughs> Nate, you are uh, definitely yeah. not coming in. Like you, you sound like you've had too many. <laughs> Too many robots? Like, <laughs> not like too many drinks. Like, I'll tell you what. This is what I think about the book. So, 
So I think we should we should. Okay. Uh, so we will be launching soon. Um, yes, we will be launching so, soon. Uh, when do we want to launch? If you are still having troubles, I would suggest hopping on to their video feed. Yeah, you can come out and sit with us on the love seat. Well, we can turn the computer around and... <laughs> I don't even know if you can hear us anymore, Nate. <laughs> But we'll wait for him, and then we'll we'll kind of get to the big old launch process. And so we're uh, so as far as like as a part of the Kickstarter, what, uh, maybe we talk about a couple of things that we're offering, sure. like as as backer rewards. Yeah. I mean, people are going to be able to see the actual Kickstarter, but it might be good to have you know a, in in video form as well, and and some sort of recording. Um, oh, so, like the video that's going to be on the top of the, the page? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, as part of this, you know, we can, we can say yeah, something. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. It took us a long time to do this Kickstarter. Yeah. We're talking about the background. Oh, man. Uh, oh, and oh, by, so. by the way, I, I want to just say that um, we spent a good deal, a nice time doing a proper Kickstarter pitch video. We do some in-character stuff and some out-of-character pitching. Um, I'm actually really happy with the in-character stuff. It Kind of feels like what we did with the RuffleCon announcement, um, in how it's fun and we're in costume and it's it's nice. Um, so I just want to say you know thank you guys for joining me and in, in doing all those video bits. Um, that was just fun, and I can't wait till everyone else can see it too. Mm. Um, so, well, as far as I guess uh, as far as rewards, we're we're offering. Um, I guess the primary thing we're offering are books. the books. Um, <laughs> you copy, get a book. Copy, you get a book. <laughs> copies of the book, both paperback and hardcover. The hardcover is Kickstarter exclusive. Yeah. Uh, won't be available yeah. to purchase afterwards. So you can there's only that. get it through the Kickstarter. Um, there are t-shirts. T-shirts. Yeah. Um, T-shirts. There are bookmarks. Yes. Mm -hmm. The artwork is. We're still working. We're still doing yeah. the art. We're still working on that art because art takes time, and we uh, we want to do it right, or at least as right as possible. It's hard to find the right whip to motivate artists. Artists with. <laughs> so. Um, but, and I think even with our largest here, uh, one of the things that we, we really enjoyed doing were the uh, flash fiction stories. Yeah. And we'll be, and as part of the highest tier, it comes with the, uh, a set of 18, 18, which was the first run of our flash fiction stories. Are they downstairs? Uh, yes, I, okay. yeah, they're back downstairs. Um, so those will, be, those will be sent along with. Yep. So that'll be uh, it's a nice little addition. It's a little bit more literature available, and uh, yeah, and we have uh, the support Antiford pins, yep. which um, we tend to bring with us with every convention, um, which I can make myself out of vintage ribbon and uh, source materials. I still can't believe you found that ribbon. I know it's so perfect. Yeah, so those are the the tiny flash. Sam, section. you may have to talk. Yep. yep. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. These these are the uh, the flash the little mini flash fiction books. Um, so we've got eighteen of these. Um, we may we probably have more on the way. I'm assuming, but yes, but yeah. for this Kickstarter, we're only offering the original eighteen run. Um, so. Yep. Um. Um. Uh, yeah. This is uh, the support anchor defense. Yeah. yeah. So. We uh we have a few, we have more than a few decent rewards. Uh, we have a number of reward tiers, uh, and we're. I know I've been looking forward to this for a while now. Uh, it's been a lot of work, and it's been a long time coming. Yes. So. And a good way to get our swag. Yes. <laughs> it's a good way for people who want to support us to get, you know. Swag of ours, and then yeah. to to help you know it, it's a Kickstarter. It's going to help us be able to publish in the future. It's going to be able yeah. to help us 
get to potentially get to more conference uh, conventions and whatnot. Um, it'll it'll definitely yeah. help boost us from a um, an internet group that goes to uh, goes to conventions occasionally, uh, yeah. kind of taking it up to uh, the next level. Yeah, and I guess with that, like the the risk of not meeting our goal, I guess, is just that like. We owe it to everyone to actually make this book a reality, but we might have to do a tiny run, a small run, maybe some more on demand. It's going to be limited unless we get our Kickstarter go uh, goal, yeah. which basically is, yay, we get to print a bunch of books that are, you know, it basically immediately sold with the backer awards. Um, and we get to print enough um, to kind of bring with us to conventions and trying to push to bookstores. And you know, and that sort of thing. So and it's it also, a big event. It's also a promise that um, we'll have more in the future. That it's not a one and done deal. This is not just technically for this book. It's also to get us with a little bit of a net so we can start the next one without having to reach out to everyone every time. Um, and it's so. it, it's not and it's not just a promise to the people who are who, who, who like us and who yeah. help us and who want to read the stories that, that come out of Citizens of Anaford, but to the authors themselves, uh, that they are, that, you know, they can get this kind of recognition that they can get published, that they yeah. can, you know, what, what they're doing and while yes, it absolutely matters and all of it's fantastic, but it, it's, it's a nice honor to actually have something in print and be able to physically hold it. And, and read it on paper, it's, it's wonderful, so. Yep. Um, so, do you guys want to uh, see where Nate is? Uh, I'm sure oh, we know where he is. He's, yeah, his... he's having internet trouble, yeah. our internet. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sure he doesn't want to miss it, and I think we should hit the button soon. I think he's yep. watching with Jasmine. Okay. Okay, good. All right, so I think I'm going to try and put this on the screen share and show the Kickstarter but, uh, page. So, everyone ready? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Right. Push cool. the and button. We can do a, a countdown. So I'm going to share. There we go. I still can't believe we're doing this. I know. I know. We're right. ready to go. Let me just uh, shrink this page here a bit. <laughs> okay. You are ready to go. Ready to go. All right. Uh, I guess you want to guys Click to count with, with me? Start with five. 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 five four, four. Four. Three. Three. three two, two. One. One. Push the button. <laughs> okay. Push the other button. Yeah, push the button. You read that. The Where's the rules? I want to accept them. Oh yes, I've I've read this. Okay. Did you read them? <laughs> Three, <laughs> two, one. Push the other button. Loading. Oh yeah. my God. Where is it? What? Sure. Save. What is that? <laughs> it's just the the thank you goal had too late of a. We were approved. The How did that get past approval? I don't know. All right. <laughs> one more time. Three, two, one. Nate's laughing at us. Oh, of course. Everyone should laugh at us. Okay. <laughs> We're launched. We're live. I can't believe that. Forty-four live. days. Forty-four days to go. Our whole Kickstarter page. That is exciting. All right. Yeah. Woo! It just hit. Oh We've boy. got a Kickstarter! I just got really nervous all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, man.
Well, if no one likes us, no. If no one, if no one backs us, then we have back us, please, everybody. <laughs> Help us. Um, yeah. All right, and I think maybe with that we should sign off and push this yeah. on all of our friends and relatives. All right. Well, uh, I guess thanks everybody who joined us, yeah. or thank you everybody who's going to see this afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh. All right. Yeah. Bye. Bye.